Good afternoon, my name is Donovan Carter. I'm here with the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program in Washington, D.C. Um, today is Saturday, August 28th, 2021. And I'm here with... Terry Williams. Terry Williams. And... Linda Williams. Tavon Williams. Tavon Williams. Okay. And uh, Williams family, tell me why, a bit about why you're here today. I'm here because my son was murdered in 1995 by a sixth district police officer, um, Christopher Payne. And um, he was shot seven times. Um, seven times, twice in the head on the left side, and five times on the left side, straight down. Um, he had just turned 18. He was born January the 7th. He was murdered eight, um, January, I'm sorry, February the 8th. It's his death day. He had just turned 18 years old. Antonio, which we call Tony, he, um, he loved drawing. Um, there was a business that wanted him to start making T-shirts. He was very, uh, He's a funny guy. He was a good uncle. He had uncles. I mean, I'm sorry, he had nieces and nephews that he left behind, which they, like today, they still remember him because we make it be known. We um, always let our family, as far as my grandkids, my great grands, know they had an uncle out here. Um, Tony would help you with anything. He loved animals. Oh my God, he loved animals. He brought so many stray animals home. Um, he um, had one sister, he had, well, he had one sister. He had three brothers, he got three brothers, which is one also was murdered by a DC officer back in 1995 also, which is Joseph Cooper. Um, they was very close, we had a tight-knit family. Um, his dad oh, just loved him. Um, Tony, again, I say would do anything. I mean, I had calls about him gonna come about school but his teachers loved him. They loved him. He had one teacher named Miss Moody. And when she left, oh boy, he just wanted to cry. So once he got attached to you, he, he was attached. He would do anything he could do for you. Um, Tony was just was a big cuddly bear. And he wore approximately about 200 pounds at 18 years old. So I miss my son, miss him. Does anyone else want to say anything about, about Tony? Um, I love my nephew. He was funny. That's all. I miss him. Um, I was seven years old when he got killed by the police. Could you hold a little closer? Could, could you hold I was seven years now? old when he got killed by the police. You know, sir, I remember that night. They, um... Well, I know I woke up out of my sleep or whatever, because everybody in the house was kirking off, you know? And then I found out, you know, my brother was dead. So I just hope they do something about that, whatever they need to do, because they need to stop that shit. Stop what they doing out here. Um, do I need to tell you the story of what happened? You don't have to if you don't want to. I mean, I have no problem, because it need to be known. Uh, uh, tell, yes, Wait, tell me. Was killed. Um, I got, um, it was approximately 12 o'clock. Let me see this. Approximately 12 a.m. in the morning. Um, but we got uh, him and um, one of his little buddies. Like today, we talked to the little guy. He's like a son to me, like him. And um, his mom called the police on my son. And the police came to the house, they left. This officer, Christopher Payne, which um, he's in um, City Paper, 1998 issue. They can find that on the web also. They had my son in the uh, article, seven pages of him. It's called Overkill. And um, he's also in this book, Stolen Lives. The, um, my son is in this book also. And when he knocked on the door, he Came, we let him come in, but my son, he went out the back door, because we had very crooked cops. Right today, and back then, we definitely had crooked cops. They would wear bandanas during that time. So, when he knocked at the door, um, I let him in, because there was no reason 
for me not to let him in because I knew my son had done, had not done anything because the other, other police had left. He just happened to hear it on the radio. So when he knocked on the door, he went back out hunting for my son. This is all in the article if they was to read it. He went, he was a police that hunt people down. And he went hunting for my son that night. When he found my son again, when he shot my son from witness statement, which is in Washington Post, which is in the, uh, also article 1995. No, this is 93. Washington Post is 98. And um, he looked up, my son here, and he shot him. He looked up again, shot him. And then shot him all the way down from eyewitness. We went to court. I don't know if the lawyer got paid, but we did have a power attorney, what you call them, representative for his estate. We never seen any monies, which in city paper, I said, I'm not about the money. I'm about justice for my son. They brought my son body to my house, the morgue wagon. And while he laid there, they told us to come outside to identify my son. They let my son lay on the ground. And the ambulance, I'm going to say where they are at, and my son lay, I'm going to say here. They would not let the ambulance go near my son. So I don't know if my son died or not, right there. They locked me and my husband in a squat car. And I, I was kicking, kicking the door, because as he said, he was young, and his sister two years older than him. They left them, and we had to leave them in the house as they locked us in the squad car where my son lay bleeding, being shot seven times. Our witness, again, say he actually, and he come from the military, this officer, so he had military uh, tactics. Um, my oldest son was there. It was no gun fan, no residue, nothing. But they say my son pointed a gun at him and shot him. They found no evidence of that. We never found out any. I can't even read the article. Right today, I have never read this article, the Washington Post. I have never read um, the uh, police report. I just can't read it out of all these years. And as long as I got breath in my body, I'm going to be my son's eyes, ears, and mouth until they take my breath away. What do you want the world to know about, about Tony? About Tony? I want justice for Tony because he didn't deserve what happened to him. He did not deserve it. He wanted to live. He was a very happy person, just starting his life out. He was going somewhere. He had no children, but he was still in school, and he was a great artist. I have artwork of his. They wanted him to design T-shirts, like these T-shirts. Yes. Yes. And I want justice. I want his case reopened because I'm going to fight. It's eating me up. And I cannot think about it sometimes because it feel like I would go crazy. Because when he got killed, I walk past every other day. It's right around the corner with the store at. Every, I just ask God to take that malice out of my heart, which he did. But I want his case reopened. He deserved justice. He deserved justice. And when I die, I hope my family take over to reopen these cases because they it's too much evidence to say this officer did something crooked. Even his own supervisor, Lieutenant Kobe, and Janet Reno at that time, I think was the uh, Attorney General at that time. So it's um, 1995 police shootings. He's in that with Washington Post. 1995 police shooting. City paper, he's in overkill. Two city papers called Overkill. This is him, as they see. I, um, this is him running. This is the way they, they perceive him, running away from the police. Thank you. Thank you. Unless you had some more questions. No, thank you guys for coming. Okay, um, thank you. I appreciate you guys for being here. I, I truly admire your strength. I really do. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.